Caregiving can sometimes feel like an impossible struggle. Caregivers may be torn between taking care of loved ones and trying to maintain balance in life. The good news is that it doesn't have to be that way. The Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson is here to focus on the conversation of caring. You're not alone. In fact, you're in exactly the right place to share stories and learn tips and resources to help you and your loved ones. So now, please welcome the host of The Caring Generation, Pamela D. Wilson. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, speaker, consultant, and guardian of the caring generation. Thank you for listening to this week's show. If you find this podcast helpful, please like it and follow it on your favorite podcast apps. Your participation through likes and follows helps the show reach more people throughout the world who are looking for hope, help, and support for their health or when caring for aging or elderly parents, spouses, and other family members. If you have a question or an idea for a future program, go to my website, PamelaDWilson.com, click on the Contact Me button, and complete the Caregiver Survey. You can also complete the contact form to schedule a one-to-one consultation with me. You can learn more about me and the support I offer by checking out the show notes in the podcast or by visiting my website, PamelaDWilson.com. Welcome to episode 198, year six for the Caring Generation podcast. This year's format is take 15 actionable tips and helpful insights in about 15 minutes, give or take a minute. This week's discussion is about how to estimate when care will progress for elderly parents, spouses, and loved ones. Caregivers often worry about what is going to happen next. They lose sleep or they become immersed in a whirlwind of constant worry and negative thoughts that can be very challenging to stop. Being in a spiral of negative thinking and worry is like being in an airplane that is nose diving to the ground. My goal in this podcast episode 198 is to help you avoid a crash by helping you understand four stages of caregiving that can help you predict how care needs might change or progress. As you learn to predict needs, you can minimize unexpected surprises, feel more in control, and identify the financial, time, and people resources needed to provide care. I call these four stages the fledgling, the test run, the mezzo-mezzo, and the home stretch. The first stage of caregiving is fledgling when caregivers say, I don't know. Am I a caregiver? I didn't know. Was I a caregiver? When you're just helping out and loved ones are relatively healthy and need just a little bit of assistance, this fledgling state can last for years. However, in the fledgling state, caregivers may initially spend one to two hours a week with a parent and the time begins to creep up, adding to more hours. Track the time you devote each day or week to caregiving activities because one to two hours a week can quickly become four to six hours a week and then time on the weekends and even possibly eventually a full-time job in addition to your paying full-time job. An accident or a change in health that requires more help is that factor that moves caregivers from the fledgling stage to the next stage, which I call the test run. The test run is when parents begin to experience physical changes that make them less able to perform daily activities. One example is walking up and down the steps to do the laundry. Another strenuous physical activity for an elderly parent may be hauling a heavy trash bin to the curb. Activities previously completed with ease become more difficult because of physical weakness, balance problems, heart problems, shortness of breath, and other health problems. During the test run, household support and help with daily chores from caregivers begin and increase. Tasks like dusting, sweeping, or vacuuming floors. Caring for pets might involve buying dog food or taking them to the vet. Doing laundry and changing bed linens require physical stamina, bending, lifting, and hand dexterity that your parents may no longer have. Caregivers deep clean bathrooms, remove spoiled foods from the refrigerator, 
carry in items from the grocery store, and prepare meals. At this point, you may feel more like an errand runner or a maid than a son, daughter, or spouse. The test run is the time to learn about health issues that require health and medical decisions. At this stage, an elderly parent may be experiencing slight declines or some memory loss. The presence of chronic illnesses like high blood pressure, asthma, arthritis, diabetes, or other conditions may result in elderly parents having good days and bad days. Your loved ones may begin worrying more about their health. As the test run stage moves forward, caregivers become more involved. Medical providers, including doctors, nurses, and others, may begin calling you the caregiver and expect you to attend all appointments. When you attend those appointments, you may be providing background information to help the doctors with diagnosis or treatment plans for your parents. You may notice that this test run stage is when you begin taking time off work to attend routine medical appointments. Your parents begin calling you more often at work. This stage offers the most significant opportunity to be proactive in talking about managing health to improve the situation instead of focusing on illnesses becoming worse. It's important to talk about the time you are contributing to caregiving with your parents and to begin investigating other resources like paid caregivers who can come into the home. Instead of mom or dad accepting that ah, this is just what happens with getting older, encourage your parents to participate more proactively in their well-being, health, and health care appointments. Manage expectations about your time and the type of your participation. It's very important so that you don't overcommit or overpromise. Be clear with elderly parents or loved ones to share what help you can provide and what you cannot provide. Don't feel guilty if you can't do everything they want. As their needs grow and the time to meet these needs increases, it is not possible for one person to do it all without totally disrupting their life. Paid caregivers can be hired to run errands, pick up prescriptions, clean the house, do laundry, and cook meals. Ask your loved ones, what plans have you made for your care when you can't take care of yourself? and your needs are more than what I can do. How much time do you expect me to give you each week? Did you save money to pay for caregivers, an assisted living community, or a nursing home? In some cases, caregivers may learn that loved ones thought Medicare and Social Security would pay for everything, so they didn't save for retirement. This can be quite a shock and a great lesson for caregivers of all ages to begin caring for their health today and saving for their future care expenses. If money to pay for a care is an issue for elderly loved ones, investigate the Medicaid program in the county and state where they live as soon as possible. If you live outside of the United States, begin investigating programs in your country. As the test run stage moves forward, Caregivers' tasks increasingly relate to managing the health conditions of elderly parents. For example, a parent who has diabetes may have a different need from an elderly parent diagnosed with heart disease or arthritis. While daily activities may be similar, variations in medical care and the use of medical equipment may be involved. Things like blood pressure monitors, reading blood sugar, Home is becoming the new hospital, as many tasks that used to be done in the hospital are shifting to family caregivers in the home. Coordinating care between multiple doctors can become a caregiver's responsibility and should be taken very seriously. Know that medical records and information are not always shared between doctors. This includes medication lists and tests that can actually be duplicated or that can conflict with each other if you as the caregiver are not communicating this information and sharing it between doctors. These additional tasks and the frequency of caregiver involvement transitions into the third stage of caregiving, which I call meso-meso, meaning half-half or one foot in and one foot out. During the meso-meso stage, caregivers spend more time providing healthcare support. 
the frequency of medical care and appointments skyrocket. You may attend medical appointments monthly or quarterly on a rotating basis to manage current health concerns. Your parents may see a primary care doctor and specialists. In the meso-meso stage, caregivers help elderly parents evaluate information and make medical decisions. A loved one's health may fluctuate, change quickly, or there may be frequent emergencies that require visits to the hospital emergency room. Balancing parents' independence and their dependence on the caregiver becomes critical in the meso-meso stage. Maintaining a work-life balance for the caregiver is essential. If you are trading parts of your life, this may be the time to insist your parents out hire outside help if they have the money to do so. Being too helpful as a caregiver when elderly parents can still manage safely can create greater dependence. Elderly parents can become prematurely dependent on caregivers to provide help and support. So do only what your parents cannot, even if you can do tasks quicker, faster, or easier. Let elderly parents and loved ones retain their confidence and self-esteem to manage day-to-day -day tasks. The meso-meso stage may result in more time balancing caregiving and work responsibilities. Caregivers may come to work early, leave late, or take half or full days off from work to attend medical appointments or medical procedures with parents. Talk to your workplace human resources manager and supervisor about being a caregiver. Some companies offer employee resource groups for family caregivers or have other programs available. Make plans to work your schedule around caregiving appointments. As the caregiver, you may feel stretch, stressed and overwhelmed. Time spent may be upwards of 20 or more hours each week. You may find yourself driving to a parent's home and spending the weekend to provide help. Many caregivers average 30 hours per week in this stage of care for elderly parents while holding down a full-time job. Whatever you do, think very carefully before you give up a job, your career, income, and future retirement savings to become a full-time caregiver. I know many caregivers who have done this and later regretted it. As elderly parents become less able to manage all aspects of care, caregiving and legal responsibilities move into the fourth stage of caregiving, the home stretch, the home run which is when health problems are significantly affecting daily activities. The caregiver may participate in daily care or a spouse may become a full-time 24-7 caregiver. In-home caregivers and other services like meal delivery, housekeeping, yard care, and others may supplement the care provided by family caregivers. Eventually, care needs may advance to the point that the family caregiver cannot or physically meet the daily demands of care even with the help of in-home caregivers. This is a time when discussions about continuing to stay at home or thinking about moving to a care community might happen. At this stage, loved ones may not want extensive medical care. Instead, they may value the quality of life over the length of life. Loved ones may decide to stop treatments for cancer because of the side effects, consider stopping dialysis, and other routine health procedures that no longer seem to have a benefit. While these decisions can be heartbreaking for caregivers, they are even more difficult for the person with the health condition who is confronting their mortality. We're not comfortable talking about death and dying. We don't talk about it in society and not even in families until we are forced to have these conversations. What does a good end of life look like for a loved one or you? Is it time spent with family and friends, not more medical care? Would you want to live if you could no longer enjoy your favorite activities but felt sick all the time. We will all have to confront these decisions at some point in life unless an unexpected accident results in an unexpected death. I encourage you to have conversations in your families. Talk about how care will progress for older loved ones. Be prepared for decision making. Talk about caregiver time expectations, money to pay for care, Everything that's involved in making these decisions, there is so much to think about. And the earlier you have these conversations, the more your family will be aligned on a plan. If you don't know how to do this, go below in this podcast. You can go to my website. There is a free online course called How to Care for Elderly Parents that actually applies to caring for yourself. Eight chapters, eight separate programs with webinars that talk about all of the details of being prepared for these types of medical decisions.
I thank you so much for being here. This is episode 198. Again, if you find this podcast helpful, please like it and follow it on your favorite podcast app. Your participation through these likes and followers will help this show reach more people throughout the world who are looking for hope, help, and support for their health or when caring for aging parents or elderly parents, spouses, and other family members. I'm Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, advocate, and speaker on The Caring Generation. I look forward to being with you again soon. God bless you all. Sleep well tonight. Have a fabulous day tomorrow and enjoy each day until we are here together again. Tune in each week for The Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson. Come join the conversation and see how Pamela can provide solutions and peace of mind for everyone. Here on Pamela D. Wilson's The Caring Generation.